in this video we're going to be wiring up the jumper ion 2.4 tra uh, transmitter for express LRS and we're going to wire this up to this guy which is the FSI 6x this only works on this module and a similar module model of controllers that is actually kind of replicated from this one if you do use the FSI 6 this process is actually going to be different for that remote and so I would recommend you watch some other videos on that one specifically but this one's going to be on the FSI 6X and hooking up Express LRS so on the back here I already got this pulled apart but uh, I already have all this wired up that I'm going to put in here. Basically, what we're doing, and we're going to show a little, I'm going to throw up the diagram here. Right here. Okay, so I wired up to the 3.3 volts, the S port, and then this ground port as well on my controller. And so how I got away with going to the 3.3 volt pad is I actually am using this buck converter. This will also be linked down below as well as the resources that I'm using on my computer screen. But this buck converter basically takes the 3.3 and it is now outputting, I set it to 7.8. So this, I believe, handles up 6 volts up to 8.4 volts of electricity for this specific one. I know some other ones are 5 volts and there is actually a 5 volt pad on this board and it shows on this diagram but I didn't really look at where it's at but it does have 5 volt pad but why I also chose this 3.3 volt pad is I actually don't get power out to my module unless I turn on my remote. Uh, of course, battery's not connected, but uh, if you go straight to the five volts, that is actually a constant power because it's a, it's kind of like a VBAT, I believe, port. And so it's just constantly on, constantly running. And so you have to make sure you unplug your module every single time you turn off your remote that way it doesn't kill your battery so I have it going to the buck receiver and then I have everything going to this connector which this connector is really nice because it's keyed basically so you can I can't basically plug this in wrong it only goes in like this with the colors matching and I can't flip it the other way so this really helps me basically not get this wrong when the case is closed and you can't see the colors on the inside. Uh, so I have a little converter here that I will be using. And so this will plug straight into the bottom of the remote. And then this end right here is going to go to the these three pins right here. Just like that. And then uh, I'll show up a diagram right here on the screen for basically these pins, but you want to make sure that you get the correct side. And one of these days, if I ever get my hands on a 3D printer, I'm going to 3D print a mount so I can basically just slide this onto the controller and it'll automatically plug in my pins into the holes. and. I would be good to go and then it's not a hassle basically plugging this in but you can see that does plug straight in right there okay so let's get into the Luro script I'm going to put okay so now we're going to download OpenTX onto our rate transmitter here so what I have done is I've set up the back panel it's connected but not on but I have my wire going to the computer plugged in and then I actually bridged two pads together uh, 
here we go here's a little diagram of it and so these two pads that's in red I basically put my soldering iron on and just soldered the two pads together bridged them together and so when you after you bridge those two or I've seen some people even hold a screwdriver to those pins and do this but after you connect the pins together you're going to turn on your radio you can see I have no diagram whatsoever here but on our computer if we open up device manager we can actually see down here that we have a STM32 bootloader this is actually our transmitter okay so once you have it in bootloader mode you can go to the STM32 cube programmer and then you basically want to read for a USB make sure you have the USB selected and hit connect uh, this is going to read your whole board and the software that's on here and then all you're gonna have to do what you want to do first is you want to hit read but you want to hit this drop down and hit save as and you kind of want to create a default one here so that if some if you do happen to ruin your remote to it, that is a way you can at least get it back and then you want to make sure your address and your size is correct like you see right here and then all you're going to have to do is open the bin file which I'll link in the description below what uh, where you can download these bin files but you're going to open up the bin file just by hitting open and then you can select the one you need and then you're just we're just going to hit download. And then it's just going to run and download its thing. Okay, it says we are completed. So we can go ahead and disconnect it here. And then what we're going to do on the remote, we're just going to double check that it did work. We're going to unplug this from the computer and then we're going to basically just turn it on and to the mode we're going to long press the OK button to get in the models and then we just have to hit the bind button once to set up the setup menu and then we're going to go to the very very bottom and right here is where you can see that we have internal and external um, basically models and so on this external one we're going to hit OK and we're changing it to crossfire okay so what we did here is we switched the internal off that way we have access to the external and we switch this over to crossfire and I'm just going to keep the range here 1 to 16 but at this point now uh, we can exit out I do want to make sure it saves I'm pretty sure that's to hold the cancel I'm going to go back into it just to yep it did save for me so I'm just going to fully exit there I'm going to power off plug in my module and then I'm going to turn this guy on back on and then what we should be able to do now is long press the express tool and that goes in and then when we hit on on the express Lula script then we can see that it actually shows up there and it no longer shows that loading screen so now what we need to do so we actually need to flash our transmitter. Okay, so we'll, to update our Express LRS module, I actually plug this into a USB C to the computer. Um, I was for some reason I was having troubles with the Wi-Fi, but um, I just hooked up to the thing, and so you can see it's just finished successful um, 
I'm going to go back because I already did a little script, but this is the settings I put in here. The jumper nano transmitter, which is what I have, and then uh, basically you have to put in your binding phrase so that your receiver and your um, module binds together. And then I put on the Wi-Fi to hopefully make it easier to for them to come together. And but then all you're gonna have to do is hit on the, the COM port where I have it plugged in USB, and then just hit build and flash basically, and that's all there is to it. Okay, now how we can confirm that we flash this successfully is we just turn on the module itself. And you can see when this turns on, hold up better the camera, that we have the newest version on there. Uh, it's hard to read, but it says uh, 3.0.1, which is the newest version and the version that we did just flash on there. So we do know that the flash did work correctly as well. So now what we're going to do is power this off and we're going to get the drone out and power we're going to show you how to do the receiver. Okay, so we to flash our receiver that we have on here, uh, it's pretty simple to do over Wi-Fi. So all we're going to have to do is plug in our drone itself, give it power. My receiver happens to be here on the bottom, but um, you can see that it's now flashing. Okay, so to flash the receiver here my receiver is now powered on and if you wait 30 seconds of light blinks super fast and then that's how you know it's on Wi-Fi your for some reason on my PC right here I am not actually seen like I see the Wi-Fi so you can see that it pops up but I'm actually not able to basically connect to it so I'm basically going to follow along these instructions right here, but do it on my phone. And um, update my receiver, and I'll show you guys. I'll record on my phone and show you guys the process of doing it through the phone itself. Okay, so do let's so do this through the phone first. I'm going to need the um, script file for this so we're going to select my receiver which is the mini they do have a whole bunch of different receivers you just gotta make sure you have the right one I'm going to select UART so it just saves to a basically the phone so I can then put it on the website and then I'm just going to hit build, not build and flash because I'm not going to the COM port. I just want to actually build it. So we're going to build it. Oh, I'm not connected to the network. Let me plug in the eth my Ethernet cable back in. Okay, now we can retry. And we're going to build a file here. Okay, now we can see that it was successful and it opened up a basically just a file explorer where it's at. And I'm just going to drag the bin file into my phone. And then I'm going to do the rest on the phone and I, I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do this. So on the phone, I'm going to screen recorder okay so we can see that we are connected to the Wi-Fi and we're just following the instructions on 
uh, Express LRS website of how to do this. We're going to open the Google up and we're just going to go 10 dot zero dot zero dot one and we can see that this is the receiver thing so we're just going to choose a file access my files real fast and I put in documents so here it is up at the top this bin file and then we're just going to hit update Okay, we can see that completely updated and we completely flashed. And it just gives us a little warning there and it shows that I just disconnected from this page. If I refresh it, probably, I don't know what it would do. Yeah, but it won't work because I'm no longer connected to the network. Okay, so after we flash the receiver firmware and the module firmware, how are we going to tell if now with the bind key, if it works, binding them together, it sh should just bind automatically, seeing how in our configurator right here. Let me pull it up. Um, We had our bind phrase and seeing how our bind phrase should be now the same on our RX and our TX, it should bind automatically. Uh, one of the videos I'm using and will be linked down below is Joshua Bardwell's video, the starting guide on how to basically do this whole process. And so I would recommend um, watching his video, learning some more. but. Um, how we can tell if it's connected is we're going to turn on our remote first and we can see that this is getting powered up and you just want that to fully boot up and then we're going to power up our drone and then on our receiver on the transmitter here we can see that it says connected now up there at the top and our LED light on our receiver right there is a solid green light. That's how we know that we have successfully bound the two together. And so this just ends the video of how to install Express LRS onto the FS6 i6x controller and all the resources and the documentation I used to do this project will be linked down below so you can do your own research as well.